say thank you to the Stivers for hosting this harvest celebration this morning at this beautiful place on Kentucky State University's campus. It's their research, agricultural research lab. Beautiful farm out here. I'm going to have a wonderful day. Kind of cool this morning, but I think it's supposed to warm up a little bit later on. So, looking forward to a great day with a bunch of great people, great speakers. But just out, kind of looking around. Kids table. And know that they wanted to spend the rest of their lives together, and our families were thrilled because we loved them both. And now we have Wyatt and Raven to add to it. I always knew that Jennifer had a little bit of Laura Eagles Wilder in her, <laughs> a little bit of Scarlett O'Hara, and a smidgen of Miss Kitty. <laughs> and then along came Zach. Guess what he had? A little bit of Matt Dillon, 
a little bit of John Boy Walton, and a whole lot of Grizzly Adams. Grizzly Adams didn't have a chainsaw before I said exactly one. If you need him to cut a window in your chicken coop, he'll come with it. Or a door. Or a book. So we're, we're glad to be on this chapter and follow along with them. Who would have known that they'd been YouTubers in this chapter of their life? But we're certainly glad they are. Please welcome Zach and Jennifer. <laughs> speakers for a few minutes and how beautiful it is out here but this is Kentucky for you
Throughout the year, she has performed and frequented more than 40 musical venues and jamborees across the state of Kentucky, as well as Indiana and Tennessee. She has also volunteered musically for numerous local organizations and fundraisers, and she was honored to have worked with the vocal coach Ron Browning in Nashville in 2008 and with Davidson Music Group in Nashville at the age of 13. She married her high school sweetheart, Derek, who hopefully will be here in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and they have three, three beautiful babies, and um, Eli White and Jackson and Paxton were the little baby that they lost. And her greatest accomplishment is being a mom, and I agree with that because she's an amazing mom. So she's going to sing for us, and y'all eat, enjoy the food.
north of here, and actually Frankfurt is like my second hometown because I grew up probably in Frankfurt more than knowing it except for going to school. So around here, I'm sure they can um, second this, that nobody used to call themselves homesteaders around here. Uh, except for when they took the census and people were reported as farmers or homemakers. But they didn't, they didn't call themselves that because they didn't need a label because everybody around them did it. So we have to use the label because nobody knows what we do because we're now the minority um, lifestyle, which used to be the majority lifestyle. But one of the things that most homesteads back then had in common was poultry. And most commonly, chicken. You really didn't go to anybody's farm that didn't have chickens running around the yard. So, um, the poultry that is most often raised on homesteads is chickens, ducks, geese, turkeys, guineas, quail, and pheasants. Um, I have experience with chickens, ducks, and turkey. Um, I may get into guineas this year. Zach's going to be a little bit more intrigued with it, but I have to talk Kevin into it. Our neighbors used to have them when he was growing up. He's lived there his whole life. It's a family farm, and um, they were quite goofy. So, trying to talk him into it. Um, there's also people like me that expand a little bit further out from that and have other birds that really don't serve a purpose except for being gorgeous because I have pea fowl. Um, they were gifted to me from someone who had them, which is, a, when you get a homestead going, a lot of people will figure out if you like animals and you will find yourself <laughs> the home for wayward animals. Um, if anybody's intrigued by peacocks, I will tell you that I didn't know until I got them, but it's perfectly fine with me now. But they can live up to 50 years in an environment. Most commonly 20, but there are reports of over 50. So. Um, chickens, like I said, are most commonly considered, are most commonly found on homesteads. That's because they're considered the gateway animal to homesteading. Um, compared to other livestock, they're, they are a little, and sometimes a lot, easier and more cost efficient um, to raise and to manage. We didn't start out with chickens, or poultry at all for that matter. Um, truth be told, big birds always kind of freaked me out a little bit, and um, which is kind of completely hilarious to me now because I'm like the crazy chicken lady to everybody that knows me because I have more than a dozen. I'm not going to say how many, but it's more than a dozen. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to pass out in the middle of a flock of chickens. I'll just leave it at that. They don't scare me, but people are always talking about being in the hog lot. You don't want to be falling down unresponsive to chickens. So, <laughs> um, I actually used to work as a vet assistant. And I used to work in a small clinic and a large clinic, and I did farm calls, and I did um, also work the cattle weekly as a lot as a stockyard, which is probably shocking for some of you all because I'm a girl, but um, that was my favorite job that I've had so far. Did I win? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> all right, so it is our turn to speak. However, I know that was at uh, what, 4 15 now. Would you all like to take a little break, stretch your legs, give it a minute, then come back? You guys just jump right into it. Jump right into it. All right. So we will wait on the rest of the giveaway, so we'll do that at the end after we're done. Uh, just so everyone has an option. But Jen and I, when we were discussing what we want to talk about, I mean, there's, there's so many things. And one thing that Jen and I always struggle with is what is our niche? We don't have a niche. We don't have a niche. In our previous video, we talked about it. Um, we're good at a lot of things, not perfect at anything, we're great at anything, but we get things by, we make it live, we take some things from it, and everything seems to be successful. So, what do we give a name to that, and that's you all, the community, that's the reason that we're good at a lot of things, we're not perfect at anything, because we gain all that knowledge from you all. So I had a question before we open it up, so I want to kind of see a scale of what this community looks like. Who in here is a homesteader, gardener, farmer that's been doing it for Sir, we feel like you got that. You've been doing a long time. You've got a few hands. Okay, what about you're starting out? You started out your homestead, but maybe it's not your forever place, but you really, you're kind of getting into it. Kind of like Jim and I Okay, so a few more. Where's the, where's the dreamers, the beginners, the ones that are searching for that dream 
and down the side of that spot, really get going. I feel like that's more of the end there. That's kind of where we're moving for. We want to talk about the homestead movement and what it's becoming, what it's starting to become. There are so many new and upcoming homesteaders, younger folks, that it's not just, this is how my great grandparents did it. They're actually in this. They're looking for it. They're not getting land that would just drop down from them. They're actually purchasing land. And we all know those stories. I know a farmer that buys a small land and says, Lord, makes any money. But I think this community is great for that. And it's because we're all together. You know, we have the tribe, we have the pack, the squad, the community. We use these terms as a team that's important. A group of people is important because no one person can do it by themselves. And that's why this movement and everybody that comes to these events, learning from others, is so extremely important. So that's where I'm kind of leading into with the power of numbers. Want to take that one? Well, before you go to that, um, a huge thing that we have noticed last three weeks, obviously the most of you here watch YouTube, um, the past three weeks on YouTube there has been a homesteading channel that was trending, which means on everybody's home screen, there's either a tab for a unit trending, one of those channels on there is a homesteading channel. And 99.9% of the time it's either a gamer channel, a music channel, or like CNN, Fox News, something like that. It's never just a normal entertainment channel. And that's something to be said. Three weeks in a row, the only steady channel is going to be YouTube creator on the rise of the trending thing. That shows you how strong this movement is getting. That even YouTube, one of the smartest artificial intelligence systems that every creator tries to break, we never will. It's never going to happen on YouTube. It's finding the home steady channels on their own. This is, YouTube doesn't let you like recommend things yourself or reach out to them. They find their day. That's really impressive. What that means is that it's working. Yep. What we're doing is working. You know, growing our own food, starting to raise our own animals, starting to connect with each other on YouTube, Facebook, even though you know, there's people from California, Iowa, Michigan, Florida. I mean, it's working. We're all connecting. We're all have the same idea in mind. We want to grow our own food. We want to be healthy. We want to be organic. We want to know where our food's coming from. And then we want to have that power in numbers because if you just do it by yourself, you know, if me and Zach were just doing this without any of you, yeah, it would still be awesome. We're still growing our food. And right. We have a point, but just to be nominated is absolutely amazing. So we always search my day, and I don't know who the other four that are out there, but I don't know if they have 13,500 people that are trying to get this one out there. So that's exciting. Yes. So we'll, we'll continue to keep everyone updated, but it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see if we don't win it tonight. Yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you all do it. I hope that when you at least one day, because all of this amazing knowledge that was shared today, I know I get a lot of it. I haven't heard it. So I hope you all take a few things home. You learned something. You feel a little more motivated because no matter what state you are in this homesteading journey, which I love seeing all the beginners' hands jump up, by the way. That's, that's beautiful to see. Keep going. Keep pushing. You're gonna have a hard time. There are times her and I just sit there and cry together when our house is halfway unfinished. Moving to North Carolina, you know, was, we thought the dream was over, but then we spent nine months living suburban life, and the dream was still there. We came back, and now here we are today with like 50 something animals up to the at this point. Turkey for the who threw the turkey the day before you have a massive event. <laughs> <laughs> and so for you all, because we'll go ahead and fill it to this group, because we love you all, you all came all the way to Frankfurt, Kentucky. The other animal is Porter's Crosses. So we got 20 Porter's Crosses that we got, and those are the milk delivery six orders that's coming out. So we got chickens and turkeys, so we're done. Which is our first meat animal yeah. we have ever
It is not a three to six, zero seven to seven. Zero seven to seven.
this full tank is a fertilizer package. So you got some uh, calcium, organic fertilizer, and oh, some liquid fish. That's the good stuff. That's our favorite stuff. And some dry steak. This is another worker basket. It doesn't look like a plastic this one. What is the basket? Whisker basket. Whisker? Whisker. Yes, that's like a Y'all know me. So they came from home school, they donated yes. three baskets worth of stuff, which was just awesome. We absolutely love them. Everything they do is American Hate. So that's pretty cool. 935 So this last one means, well, we don't want to be Texas, but this is a really big deal. It's really cool. So it's a Kentucky State Park gift certificate for one night stay. So and that's at any of their lodging in a Kentucky State Park or anywhere in the state. So it's in the tent camp to get you to stay in a lodge. a lodge there for one night. So this gives you reason to come back here. Nope. Uh, See ya. Is she filming? Is she? I don't know, you're the one sitting beside her. She's still down